You have reached the voicemail box of... Frank Lucatorto. At the tone, please record your voice message. When you are finished recording, you may hang up or press pound for more options. Hi, Frank. It's snowing. Sorry, I was watching the schmoda. Listen, we've been getting a lot of requests to have you on the show, but I've had some reservations. Jay and I are kind of conflicted when it comes to having guests on the show, especially after Perry's interview. I mean, what a disaster. But I had no idea if you'd even be good on the mic. You work in the closet all the time. I didn't even know what your voice sounded like, okay? So I went ahead and asked Copster if he wouldn't mind to have you on the wangers first as an audition of sorts. I just thought, you know, it'd be the schmoes no feed. What's that going to matter to anybody? But I did think you did a great job. You were a little wheezy. But that's fine. Get you some Theraflu. You'll be fine. Anyway, maybe we'll get you on here in a couple weeks, and then we can show everybody how it's done, okay? I just need you to make sure that there's somebody in the office that can help you set up a mic. I don't know if there's anybody around that can do that. But anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Tell somebody to fix the podcast descriptions. Okay, I'll see you. You know what's really shitty about your Starbucks? Which one, mine? Yeah, your... No. Which ones? I have two. Both of them, apparently, because I've... They're, they're like six feet away from each other. They are six. Yeah, that's so weird. They're in the same shopping center. How strange is that? So that's one thing that sucks about it. Can I ask you, can I ask you a question? Which one do you think is better? I haven't had your Kroger Starbucks. Which one would you think is better? I would assume that the, the standalone location is better because... They're allowed to get tips, whereas you can't tip your baristas if they work for Kroger. So I would assume that the <laughs> I would assume that the employees at the standalone would work harder for their tips. Please, first of all, no one should ever be tipping a Starbucks. Employee. I agree one hundred percent. I had that argument with Eric. That's just yeah. n- not a thing. Yes, that's not a thing. Yes, it shouldn't be a thing. The only reason I do it is because. My girlfriend uh, gets gets tipped because she's a tattoo artist. Now, a clear difference between making a drink and putting something on your body for the rest of your life. Very big difference. I had this argument with my best friend who wrote and produced this very theme song. He works at Starbucks, and I, I told him, I, I don't think I should be tipping you guys because I don't tip cooks when I go out to restaurants. I don't tip the cashier at McDonald's. If you were serving me, if you were taking the time to serve me, I would get it. At a sit-down restaurant, fantastic, I get that. But if you're just making a drink and you're an assembly line worker making drinks, I just don't think I should tip you. And it's nothing against the worker. It's nothing against Starbucks. It's based purely on the consistency of my restaurant ethics and etiquette. Well, I mean, listen, if we want to talk tips, I mean, we do this show multiple hours a week and uh, we don't get we don't get tips but 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 we did get a starbucks gift card from from one mark ellis and to answer the question that i posed uh the 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 one inside the grocery store is the best one and i don't know why um they've been around longer they just make better drinks i don't know i don't know why that uh, mystery exists do you think in their racial discrimination training that they referred to black people as mocha and white people as vanilla? No, that's actually an awful joke. I'm ashamed of you for writing Damn, it. that was cold, brew. Just go to the song. Listening to Collider Afterthoughts, the show that examines the content and fandom at Collider. My name is Ryan Snelling. As always, Jay Williams, what's happening? Don't get it twisted. You're listening to the OG LaCroix Supporters Podcast, okay? I don't want to hear about none of this, none of this Collider. So we had the, the audacity, not we had the audacity, somebody had the audacity to come onto our Facebook group and talk about another podcast that supports. LaCroix, I don't even want to hear it, okay? We support the uh, the bubbly beverage itself. And um, 
I'm, I'm just ashamed. I'm just ashamed of everybody in Burbank. The only person that recognizes that we are the true LaCroix boys is Mark Ellis because he actually blamed us for Harloff's LaCroix addiction. So I take great pride in that. Thank you for recognizing. That's all I got on that. I don't know where I was going with that. Okay. I, 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 all right. I, Very good. You know, I have this show up in my head. I didn't know we'd start off with LaCroix. We already did the Starbucks. You threw me off. So anyway, we're here to talk about Collider. It, it, it's funny. Last week's show was two hours long. And for one, I don't think Collider Afterthoughts, I don't think that this show has any business being two hours long. But I was wondering what you thought about the fact that there's no other show on Collider that would take the time to be that long. How many How many of our listeners do you think are just giving up? Because Movie Talk, Movie Review Talk, Jedi Council, all of those shows have their audiences trained to only pay attention for about 45 minutes to an hour. Do you think it matters with our audience? Do you think they're actually sticking around and they care that much about what we think of Collider Games? Um, I think I think any conversation has the potential to be long winded, including ours. But our conversations are typically pretty natural, like so they we we never intend for them to go as long as they do. Um, I think I think people at Collider might be too used to looking at the clock. Um, we we went all the way back to the Schmoes No Live show. We were having conversations like that. Like it was a two hour long show, and that felt foreign. And we would sort of clamor for more because it was a lot of fun and that's my biggest goal like if you've got your fix and you want to leave then that's totally fine but our goal is to talk enough and have good conversations enough to where you don't look at the clock if that makes any sense yeah i i bet that this show this episode will be a lot shorter than last week's that that doesn't mean we don't have a lot of say that that doesn't mean we don't have a lot of good stuff to talk about though i mean right now this week Jay and I, we are feuding with everybody. Ace is mad at us because he thinks we get paid to do this show. And Cody's mad at us because I quit supporting their Patreon. So just all around, we have the feuds. (sighs) Nothing to say about that? Was that a cocky prick sip? (sighs) Very good. I want to talk about the podcast feed first, and we always sort of have to play catch up a little bit because last week the uh, Riley Roundtable dropped unsuspectedly, and I say unsuspectedly because um, (laughs) we never knew anything about the show at all. Did you get a chance to check out Riley Roundtable? I did, and it's kind of funny because I don't know if it was last week or a few weeks ago. I don't know. These things kind of run together, but regardless... uh, I sort of issued a challenge that, you know, I think it's the podcast feed has been around long enough that I want to see more stuff. I want to see more stuff going on. Um, they have the podcast studio. We know now we've seen it. We've actually got to see it. And they answered the call for sure. I mean, we didn't just get Riley, Riley Roundtable. We'll talk about other podcasts that popped up this week. Um yeah, I did get to check out the first episode and get to check out the most recent one that came out. There's two out now during the time that we're recording this. And I thought it was great, man. I thought it was fantastic. It's fascinating to know that he's electing to do it from the comfort of his own home. But it's I think there's things that come with that. I think there's a comfort level that comes with that. And I, I, I'm just going to give hats off to Riley as well because you and I both have embarked uh, upon – the journey of a solo podcaster and we both know the trials and tribulations that exist while doing that. And I thought he absolutely nailed it. I thought he did a fantastic job. Um, I thought the conversation that he had with himself in the first episode was, was fascinating. And, you know, I never wanted to turn it off. That's something I'm always self-conscious of when I'm doing solo podcasts that it can just be a little bit monotonous. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really, really good. I'm excited to see what the future, what future lies ahead for, Riley Roundtable. I don't want to say I was shocked, but it's been a long time since it's been a long time since I've heard Riley host a podcast. And yeah, it is different. It's it is very different, different than than Ellis hosting Movie Talk. I mean, that's a show that's just transferred into a podcast. Uh, Ellis doesn't 
he's not acting as if he's hosting a podcast. And if he was, I don't know that I would. Well, that's not true. So, well, d- just just real quick to what you're speaking on, because this is going to be a theme that's going to pop up throughout this entire episode because it's happened multiple times. The conversation, the tone of voice, the approach that's on Collider is mostly on video. We're now getting to see these types of conversations, these individuals' voices on podcast form. And I think it sounds very different. I think it sounds great. I think it sounds refreshing. Well, I'll get to that point in just a second. But right. what I will say is that uh, I've missed Riley as a podcast host. Uh, he, he was a guest on my show once. That was fun. I don't I don't think he's hosted, like legitimately hosted a podcast since his Star Wars show Far, Far Away at uh at geek nation and that was several years ago so i miss riley podcasting again like you said he he was a phenomenal solo podcaster that's that's a very difficult thing to do and i thought he did it seamlessly like it, it sounded like he had always done <laughs> solo podcasting so he riley automatically like immediately out the gate became <laughs> the best podcaster at collider right now um, that on top of the fact that his show just sounds great. Like you and I have a rivalry with him when it comes to the best sounding show on Collider because it sounded so good. And yeah, it's tremendous, tremendous benefit to record that thing from home. And that's the kind of initiative that you and I have been speaking to for a long time. I know that this is a Collider show, but you and I have had back and forth. We want we want everybody to have a podcast. We want everybody to have their own brand as well. Riley, check that box. And uh, it turns out that he, he did a really, really great job. So it's like, I guess since I've listened to both episodes of Riley Roundtable, it's my mainstay when it comes to the Collider Factory feed. Um, just because I don't watch wrestling, so I haven't gotten into Body Slam. I haven't gotten into the dot .com podcast yet. So we talk an awful lot about Collider video, but we are also a Collider show. Why why haven't we felt the need to listen to the dot .com podcast before and give it some time of day on here? <coughs> Excuse me. Coming off guard there, smoking weed. Um, the problem I find... Just myself, so we talk about a lot that our approach to taking in Collider content is very different from a casual fan, but I do have to draw the line in the sand from time to time about, you know, some, there's just not enough time in the day to take in absolutely everything. That's not that's not where the excuse really ends. The one time that I have checked out the dot com podcast, one thing that I found fascinating was just the different voices that were on it, and I don't mean the audible voices, but just the types of conversations that were being had. Um, again, to echo the point that I just made with with Riley just being on in audio form as opposed to uh, being on video as well, the conversation just sounded a lot different. It reminded me of listening to something like. The, on the ringer it was a very intelligent conversation not that there aren't intelligent conversations with the collider brass but uh collider video brass but it's just different um i think for me as somebody that takes in a lot of content somebody that takes in a lot of um uh, movie content just pop culture content i sort of have to draw the line in the sand with how much actual movie conversations and movie just content in general that i take in um and that's just one of the shows or one of the things that seems to be cut from the team. Does that make sense at all? Yes. And I don't have an excuse. So, you know what? That's the assignment <laughs> that I'm giving myself. I'm going to listen to the past couple of episodes of the Collider.com podcast because that's on us that we haven't at least had a discussion, had taken a moment to actually promote it out to you guys. And it's Agreed. in a way, that's something that, you know, it, it falls to the wayside when, when it comes to Collider video in general. It's like you don't always hear about the dot .com podcast either. Um, and maybe that's just the discussion. Maybe it's it probably is more difficult to promote the factory. Is there ever going to be a podcast idea that doesn't start out on the factory. Like what, what podcast is big enough to just out the gate become a thing? 
because I think that could be Collider Games. I'm not ready to transition into Collider Games, but I did want to ask this question before I forgot it. Yeah, I don't think there's anything in, in our circles that really exists. I mean, I guess there's some things like, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's podcasts out there that do exist, but just immediately off the top of my head, you know, Josh Makuga, I know he has a podcast with Ken, but I don't think they're just going to get their – you know what I'm saying? I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. But – I also don't think they're really in business of going out and shopping for podcasts. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that they're out there uh, with their ear to the ground, like looking for somebody to bring over into Collider and put their stamp on it. And I just don't know if that makes a lot of sense. And I know that that's not what you're saying, but it does bring up an even more interesting question is just what is the business of the podcast feed? Like, I know they've had like a partnership with Rode and this and that. We know that the podcast feeds do con- consistently well numbers wise. I mean, there's really not. I mean, I'm sure there are rises and falls and in, in listenership and this and that, but it stays pretty consistent with such a consistent audience and with such a pinpoint audience that fits a particular demographic. I'm curious of whether or not or how active they are at looking for business opportunities, whether it be advertisers or partners or whatever the case may be um, throughout the podcast feed. Christian told me that the, the exclusive Jedi council podcast that we spoke on last week, the discussion between him, Wendy and Roca on the star Wars fandom, by the way, if you haven't checked that out, definitely do it on the Jedi council podcast feed. He told me that a regular episode of Jedi council averages about 30 K but because that was an exclusive, uh, something that they promoted on actual Jedi Council for the podcast feed, it got like 75,000 plays. And that's something I spoke to last week. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, – don't I don't want people to be confused about my uh, – the thing that I just brought up about the business aspect of the, the podcast feed. That's not even really something directed at Collider. It's actually just a bigger podcast – uh, question in general, I the easiest way and the thing the idea that most people go to when they think about how to monetize podcasts is advertising. But that realm, that landscape is very weird and very strange. I've just always been of the mindset that if you have a, an accumulation <laughs> on average of anywhere between ten to thirty thousand people, you should be able to figure out something to sell to those individuals. And I know that's a weird thing to bring up. Like, oh, I don't want anybody sell anything to me. Listen, you're an audience. There ain't no money in this right now. So I just feel like there's got to be somebody out there that would be willing to do something like that. I do want to bring up one other thing. Again, another conversation I think will be consistent throughout this whole podcast discussion. But bringing, bringing these things to video is something – Bringing any podcast to video is a boundary or some sort of box that everybody looks at, right? It's sort of like a glass ceiling that a lot of podcasts think about breaking through. Not all of them do. You and I have had conversations about bringing different podcasts to video. We've brought our podcast to video. Um, Do you think that's even in the back of their mind at all? I know we got that movie talk episode that was supposed to be geared more towards the podcast audience, but there was a camera. Where are you at with putting any of this on video? Well, I mean, we sort of talked about the idea. We don't get why we don't get why they haven't already made a Collider podcast YouTube channel. Um, yes, you're speaking primarily to filming the podcast, whereas that YouTube channel sticking a camera in the corner. Yeah, yeah. well, that channel could also be e- e- even if you wanted to minimalize it even more, it could just be the way SK Plus works, where it's just the the still thumbnail, uh, and, and that's the podcast. Because there are people like Frank. We have a lot of listeners that listen to our podcast on YouTube, so there is an audience for that. Either either way, I. I don't know if it is in the back of their mind because if it was in their mind at all, again, I'm shocked that that doesn't exist already because that's that's kind of an effortless thing to to do. Um, I know I get that it's one extra thing to do, but it's not like you have to create anything else. You just need a little bit of time to to upload it. Um, so I don't know where that is uh, in their mind. I'm actually 
I was actually thinking about the fact I think they need like a Twitter account. I think they need a Twitter account, Collider mm. Podcast Network, and they tweet out to the links to every single podcast. And I know that I know that Collider Video kind of does that anyway, but I was looking at the Ringer. The Ringer has its main Twitter account, but it also has the Ringer Podcast. And the Ringer Podcast Twitter account is mainly just there to tweet out the links. Um, it doesn't get bogged down with everything else going on on the main Twitter account, which technically right now they've just added another channel. They added Collider Games. So they are pumping a lot of content uh, in- into one Twitter feed right now. So I think that separation could could work and happen right now. Uh, I think it would just be a lot cleaner and a lot easier to 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 understand. And, and plus we could be retweeting this shit like – that's something that you can promote, get people to actually tweet it out and share it and all that good stuff. Yeah, I think if, you, if you're if you going to have your eye on the dot-com podcast next week, and which I think is a good thing to do, and I might even dip my toes in those waters m- myself, but I'm actually going to pay attention to the dot-com just as a whole next week and see what sort of implementation – excuse me, wow, it would be great if I could say that word – implementation uh, they are sort of using – to bring in either a collider video stuff into some of the articles that they're writing or the podcast stuff. I've, I've talked about this before, but there was a time I think TMZ still does this where they implement, um, you know, extra content if people want it into their articles that they write, where this, this news story that frosty broke about, Star Wars putting a halt to the standalone films. It would have been great if you could have thrown in maybe a link to uh, a, the standalone Jedi Council podcast that Christian and Roca and Wendy did. Um, I think that would be beneficial in sort of getting eye, especially if that's such a big scoop. Think about how many additional eyes are going to be seeing that yeah. for the first time. I mean, I yeah, mean, we. I've brought that idea up before. Um, I remember last. Well, I don't know if it was last week. It was when Snyder first joined a couple of weeks ago. He mentioned maybe doing a Collider News podcast. Yes, it ha- it has to happen. Or maybe that was you that brought it up. Be- b- whenever it was Probably brought up. Me. I've been a big big proponent of that. But whenever that was brought up, the first thing I thought of was like, is that not the most redundant thing that they could do? I don't think it is. I mean, I think because these news bit for okay, so here's exactly how I would do it. Right now, you have the dot com writing their articles, and you have Collider Video breaking that down as well. The article and the news story are such snapshots of of what's going on. Yes, absolutely. If you bring in the movie talk discussion the next day then yes, I think we can talk about a little bit of redundancy. But there are times when I want to hear more, you know, conversation about this stuff right when it happens. The The most interesting conversations that happen with with a lot of hot button, not hot button issues, but a lot of these real hot topic, big breaking news stories happen just minutes and seconds after it happens, I mean, what did people probably do? What did you and I do, or people we know do, the second they found out about that uh, Star Wars stuff? They went to social media. They started talking with their friends. We have a group chat. People were talking about it there. Those conversations are being had immediately, and I think they need to be documented. And I think a, a podcast is by far the easiest way to document it, and it's the most raw and honest way to document it. You do that, and then you plug it into uh, that article after the fact. So then you're getting, you plug in the audio and you plug in the video version as well. So people can get everything that they could possibly want on that news article. So they're essentially filming all of their collider news stuff. They they film right. the news. They, they break exclusives on video. Now, what if again, talking about just bare minimum, what if they created a podcast feed that was just the audio of collider news? no, Imagine somebody just having on their phone, um, the uh, they get a podcast notification when mo- uh, movie news breaks in the exact same way that you get uh, a notification when the video is uploaded on on YouTube. Is that I feel like I've never heard of 
anything like that when it comes to podcasts. So if if it's just the bare minimum, could that exist? I mean, I guess it could exist, but I think you're do- I think they're doing an incredible disservice to themselves if that's all it is. It's just porting that over. I think again, the, the again with the theme of a lot of the stuff we're going to bring up on the show, the conversation you have off camera is significantly different and it's it's more long form you can get into more interesting debates. The instance that I constantly reference and think of the way it happened was after something, after the Kanye West thing went down, we got a video of it, but then there was this long form conversation. I've never listened to this podcast in my, in my life. I've never listened to it once, but I wanted more in that instance. And I got it. And it was a great conversation. And I mean, I would love to do that. I think it would be great if if we could do something like that. So if, yeah, I think it'd be awesome if the people that got paid to cover this stuff, uh, as their job, were doing it as well. Again, I guess I'm trying to keep everything at bare minimum, which is interesting though, because I eventually want to get back to Riley Roundtable. By the way, but when this first this is going to be a short episode. When this show started, when Collider Afterthought started, we had all of these ideas right out the gate, and we were told over and over, we just don't have the manpower. We just don't have the time. So where did they get the time to do all of these extra podcasts? Yeah, I mean, I I don't know the answer to that. I think I think it exists, right? So anytime you and I are only two people, and we put out a bunch of content the best way to maximize your output is to figure out the most efficient way to do it. I've never been in the studio. I've never seen what a day to day is like there, but I guess my number one point of speculation would be the efficiency. I think if collider is, is tight right now with time, with money, with whatever, with manpower, you have to engineer your efficiency in order to create either more output or just do more with, with your time. Um, that, that would be, if I was in that state, if I was in that scenario, if I was managing a company, that would be the thing I would do. What can we change? What can we alter? What can we shift to make sure this runs efficient so that we can do more with less? We can put out better stuff, all that fine nitty gritty details. I feel like we're just circling the same conversations we've had over and over again. Well, we are, but I mean, it, but, <laughs> but that's okay to do when the conversation is very poignant. I mean, again, like you can't have that in the back of your mind. Well, we've we've had this conversation before because it's relevant to what we're talking about. Oh, I, I mean, I know that. I know that. I just feel like that's what this entire show has been so far. Um, and I'm not meaning for that to happen because I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on things that we've already discussed. Uh, over new stuff but um anyway the last point that i had on on riley roundtable and again we have more podcasts to talk about so we're not quite done yet but uh the last point i wanted to make uh we joked a lot about not having any clue what riley roundtable was going to be and he he sort of gave us some insight on that first episode and while i still don't think it's very clear (laughs) what Riley Roundtable is, it's it's because he's saying that it's it's essentially going to be about everything. It's going to be about whatever he wants it to be. Excuse me. Sorry, I've got bubbles in my throat. He's going to he's going to solo podcast about issues. He's going to have panels on to discuss movie news. He wants to talk about things that nobody's talking about, like like scores and soundtracks. He he just wants to have the everything else type of show which i i applaud him for that i think that's great um now that we have two episodes under our belt i don't think riley roundtable the name really represents what it is so far again the first episode being solo the second episode just being him and roca and the only criticism that i really have is that those two episodes sort of they're about the same kind of conversation i think he actually might disagree with me but but I felt like we were again sort of being being redundant, and you just heard me say that I thought I was being redundant. So it's not really that big of a deal. 
but it was a very similar conversation about fandom. We did get Roka's perspective on it, but uh, I don't know. That's the only thing. I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm just ready to hear what else Riley Roundtable is going to be if it's truly going to be the everything else podcast. So I, I don't think you've listened to the second episode yet, but it was basically about DC fandom and Riley and Roka played their case as to why they don't actually hate DC, and they just talked a lot about Twitter trolling uh, and stuff again. So, not not that that conversation isn't important, but it was sort of the same as the, I'm just ready for I'm ready for the 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 newness of of Riley Roundtable. So, um, but yeah, he's uh, he's great. He's great at the uh, solo podcasting and I do definitely look forward to more and I actually want I want a panel that's what I want I don't know if that's going to be hard because he does podcast out of his house but uh I don't know that's all I got on Riley Roundtable do you have anything else before we move on uh no not really I think um I I enjoy the intimacy of the first episode that I heard and I'm glad to hear that there is more intimacy there I think it's a nice platform because uh, for Riley just simply because we don't get to see him on air quite as much as other people. We're getting to see him more now, but um, and I don't mind. I like the I like the behind the scenes stuff. I like the the minutia and the psychology of being in this space. If anything, to get into the quote unquote newness and just for it to feel like any other movie show is something that maybe doesn't particularly interest me as much. I, I like. I like the psychology of um, of being in this space. I think that's fascinating. Well, you and I, I think we talked about it last week. Um, we were talking about their reactions to to the fandom and how sensitive they actually are. Um, some some points that we've made together off air is that like some of the other content that we listen to, they just don't talk about or seem to care at all about fan interactions like right. the ringer they they just never talk about it like they do have a mailbag episode but i don't think they give a shit about what people say about them i don't think they read the comments i don't think they read their tw- uh, the tweets that are sent to them and it's just it's just not a thing that we're aware of we're not aware of their psyche and i kind of think that i mean you can say that about espn like if you want to go to the top um the, the tip of the iceberg, if you will. Um, I don't, I mean, Lebitard pokes fun at some of the tweets that he gets, but that's just like a different kind of show. Like, otherwise, in this professional space, you would have no idea how they are actually affected by, by fandom and by tweets because it's just like it doesn't exist. So I guess the question I want to ask you is, shouldn't, I haven't figured this out. This doesn't come from a place of judgment. Should they just stop caring about it? Yeah, I mean we we've talked about this before with Christian. It's uh I think I think that is what it sort of boils down to, but it that's not what this group of individuals were built on, right? If we look at the origins and the origins being the Schmoes No show and what the Schmoes had built, a lot of it was built on community. And I think it's been a little bit ingrained and and passed down throughout everybody and and collider because a lot of them do come from that that world that they are very communicative with their audience and their fan base and you know that's a great thing but it's also it can be a really bad thing and so i think we're seeing that right now and i think that's where christian was coming from in particular when he was having such a hard time it's because he was so used to responding to comments he was so used to reading and and having that fan participation but yeah, I th- I don't think it's the best time for that, and I think the more you grow, the more challenging that can be. And you know, to the audience that's listening, it it sucks. It's unfortunate that some people have to ruin it for the rest of other people. But I I really put the I really put the focus back on the fans. Like I've said this time and time again, to self police, it starts with you and how you act as an individual. So maybe a bunch of people doing that and a bunch of people um, being in better spirits. Maybe it'll trickle down from there. Yeah, that one was, uh, that was my fault. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk about the Collider Games podcast. I mentioned it last week. I said it uh, before, 
before it had been uploaded. I was very pleased to see that they did a podcast. I saw evidence that they have recorded a second episode. I don't know when uh, that's going up. Hopefully tomorrow. Um, we're recording this on a Thursday, the Thursday evening before you've uh, heard this. But, uh, man, I thought it was a great show. I was happy to see Fernandez on, on the show. Or I was happy to hear Fernandez on the show, rather, because uh, we thought he had left the company. <laughs> because he's just been MIA uh, the past like month or so. Uh, so it was really cool to hear him on it, hear Dorian on it, and the podcast was just really, really great, and I'm a little bit mad at it, as a matter of fact. It was so great, Collider Games has become sort of my new obsession, if you will. Jay, I, I, bought, I went out and bought a PS4, all because of Collider Games. That That is a serious investment. I am still in the hole when it comes to hosting this show, but but I love it, and I want to give Joey uh, the largest of uh, congratulations and kudos because where'd this guy come from? I mean, all of this untapped talent, I'm really, really glad to see Joey has sort of taken the reins of this channel. Yeah, this is something, it doesn't really, uh, you know, it's it's not particularly my wheelhouse, so to speak. It's not something that... I dive into the game stuff, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not interested in it or I'm not interested in what they have to say. And any good podcast will grab you and keep you regardless of what they're talking about. And that's exactly what this did. I thought uh, I thought Joey Razul was a fantastic host. It, it seemed like he had done this before or he's listened to enough podcasts to know how this is done. What it really was, was just shepherding along a very casual conversation. And th that's what it was on paper. Of course he had places that he wanted to go. It seems like he had a list of topics that he wanted to run down, but things flowed very naturally. And that's, that's what you want. I think out of a, out of a really solid podcast, or at least a podcast that I enjoy. And I thought he nailed it. I thought he did a fantastic job. Um, Dorian and Fernandez both were, were great on the show. They, they ventured off into some interesting areas. The funny thing about Fernandez, and I think the reason why you keep him away from a microphone is because sometimes he'll just, he'll just <laughs> drop shit. Like he's just like, Oh, guess what? We just hired somebody new. What? Okay. I don't know who that is, but apparently that's a thing. Oh, and by the way, uh, rockstar games, had a piece of halo at one point boom there's that knowledge for you too and it's just like <laughs> i love it i think it's great i love um sort of understand maybe not understanding his psyche i don't know if anyone truly understands mark fernandez but he's like a an enigma but uh i, I think it's great to get to see him show his fan that's the thing i get out of fernandez on these podcasts is that at the very core the fact the fact that he might not be this seasoned veteran in terms of being a pundit or just being a personality on a podcast or a YouTube channel. What you do get is this very raw fandom from him. And we'll talk about it a little bit more when we talk about some Jedi council stuff he popped up on, but it's just very raw. Like when I hear him talk, it's like listening in on a conversation that I might have with somebody at work who is also a big fan of something. And I thought it was really, really good. Um, I don't know how much time I'm going to spend with collider games, but as just, I'm not even a casual fan, just as somebody who is just interested in being, maybe just learning about some things from the gaming world, uh, they've got me at this point, and I'm definitely going to keep my eye on them. Uh, to pump the brakes on, great, okay? You know, I don't like to throw that word around. I don't know about great, but it was a really good podcast. Why wasn't it great? They, It was just out of nowhere. I didn't know Joey was capable of any of the things that I've seen him be. I just, I'm not familiar with him just because he hasn't been on screen that much. So, uh, he's definitely the right person to be shepherding. all. Did this. I say that? I didn't say he wasn't. I, I'm just saying, I, I, I like to be careful where I throw the word great around. I, that's just how I feel. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Until it's bad. Like it's an immediate, like I, I have to listen to this every week. Did you see the video that uh, had Dorian hosting the Fortnite Pro Am. Um, I think I saw a clip from it. Maybe did they maybe put it up on Instagram somewhere? Uh, I can't. That remember. is his wheelhouse. It's the best thing that Dorian has has done 
and when the video ended, it kind of ended abruptly, which was it was really weird. It ended rather abruptly, um, but it was the first time in a long time where I felt give me more of that. I since comic book shopping, I don't remember watching a video on Collider where it left me thinking I want more. Like why is this already? Why is this already over? It's it's easily. His strong suit. It's the best thing that Dorian has done so far. And it's a shame that it took place at a convention. Hopefully they can figure out a way to do to do more of that um, anywhere else. Uh, I just thought it was really, really, really good. So I'm uh, I'm excited. I, I'm a little bit pissed. Again, I, I bought a PS4. I, I subscribed to like four different gaming podcasts this week. I think that's why I'm overly excited about Collider Games. Because I'm glad... I'm glad I get to share my, again, newfound gaming fandom with Collider. That's good. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be looking for new hosts of Afterthoughts as well as a new host for Sight and Sound because Ryan Snelling is going to get addicted to video games, and we're never gonna see him again. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I uh, I came home to play Assassin's Creed Origins over going to see Incredibles two. So there's that. Um, I do wish your journey uh, on on Twitch, building your personal brand there, the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so anyway, we did get, a, yet again, another extra Jedi Council, and that's the thing I referenced when uh, I, I was sort of talking about the workflow and how they've been able to sort of add these extra podcasts into to their daily routine. Um, it's just because it's all new, I guess, and I haven't figured out what's going to warrant an extra podcast. Because when I read the title, I was like, yeah, they could just talk about that tomorrow. But that's, again, going back to points we've made before, it also matters to hear other people's points of view. And Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley most likely were not going to be on Jedi Council this week. As a matter of fact, I know that's not the case because I know that there's a Jedi Council waiting in my subscriptions with Ken and Mod Garrett. Um... But anyway, another fun listen. You mentioned how interesting it is to have Fernandez because Fernandez does not represent any of my views when it comes to Star Wars fandom. But I welcome that because it was so so unfamiliar. I I've I've never heard anybody ever say that Revenge of the Sith is their favorite Star Wars fa- uh, movie and that Orson Krennic is awesome. And I will never hear somebody say that again. But but it's good. It's good. I like it. Yeah, well, this podcast w- was the exact example of what I've already brought up. I mean, this that news broke, and they did the video, and then they went and did a podcast about it, which I thought was fascinating, a fascinating decision to do it. Um, but it works. It works. I, I was, again, I was interested in the news story, and then I had a podcast waiting for me this morning that I didn't know was going to exist. I listened to the entire thing. I thought it was great. I thought Mark did a fantastic job hosting it. That's another thing I I don't want to just skip over. Like, we talk about the Riley Roundtable and him being a good host there. Yeah, he works fantastic on these podcasts um, as well. I thought it was a, a great discussion, an interesting discussion. And the funny thing about about Mark talking about the pop culture stuff is he sort of represents something that we've often championed for Collider and just in the space in general is just just a different type of voice, right? I mean, you said it yourself. You never heard people say the things that he said, but I mean, how refreshing is that though? Like agree or disagree? Right. Like it's, it's so great to have... I mean... You know, I can only hear, and this isn't like I'm not this, I'm not throwing shade or anything like that, but I can only hear like, oh, nobody wanted a solo movie so many times before it just it becomes a numb sort of like audio clip that's just played. But when you have conversations like they had, it does offer an interesting it, it, so much so that so Mark was beating home his perspective that this was not a reactionary move by Lucasfilm to pull the trigger on this. And I didn't know how much I agreed with that, but because the conversation was so long, because they unpacked it so much, actually, really, not only do I really understand the point that he was trying to make, I actually think I kind of agree with where he was coming from, but I would not have arrived to that spot if it wasn't for that podcast existing. And that's exactly why having new perspectives is great. That's also why having a longer form discussion is great and beneficial. So are we in agreement that Riley this week became the best podcaster at Collider? 
Um, I mean, I I don't know. I I don't just offer I don't just offer titles out like that. I don't offer crowns up like that. I think he's uh he definitely wins the award of most initiative. You know what I'm saying? Like he I don't know if it was his decision to go in and make this and do this podcast. And you know what I'm the I'm fascinated by and I'm curious and is like how did how did Fernandez get roped into this? Like, were they looking for people and <laughs> and everybody else was busy? And or did he was he like, man, I really got to talk about this stuff. That's what it seemed like it was. But man, what a fascinating sort of thing to do. Like, I would of all the things I would want to be a fly on the wall for, I want to be a fly on the wall now at this era of Collider, where th- these I- really impromptu podcast just happened like hey does anybody want a podcast right now that's you and i all the time like you and i ha- say that same phrase hey does anybody want a podcast right now and everyone's like oh no i've got a baby to take care of or whatever and i just want to know who in the office is dodging being on the podcast guys if you didn't know because people still again I, I i talked about the fact that people still like listening to our podcasts on youtube they're not sold on the podcast one they don't know where to find podcasts whatever so if you guys didn't know google podcasts was unveiled today like google has their own podcast app now so you can download it it's very minimalist it's very accessible, so you don't have to worry about... Because, you know, all of this starts with iTunes. All of it starts with Apple Podcasts, and I get that if you are an iPhone user. But if you still need a way... And I guess you have to be listening to this as a podcast because I haven't been able to put them up on SK+. Plus. But um, you do have that option now, Google Podcasts. Maybe you don't like the app that you have. Uh, but Collider's podcasts are on Spotify, uh, so I just wanted to give you another another option because all of the Collider podcasts are on Google Podcasts, so you can download that right now if you are an Android user. Uh, do you have anything else on on podcast discussion before we talk about the main channel? No, nope, I think that about does it. So <laughs> last week we talked about the uh, the phone call, uh, the the phone call issues that Thursday Movie Talk had. The debacle. Last. You can call it a debacle. Yeah, it was a debacle. I didn't want to call it a disaster because we didn't even really play that angle last week. It's not how we... Ch- I mean, we have our thoughts on it, but it wasn't that big of a deal because we knew that it was just going to be better, um, which is which is fine. And I think that... I haven't watched this week's episode, but the way that you described this to me off-air, it already sounds like that they are moving in the right direction. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, this is... This is exactly what I think you do when you're still trying to figure things out, right? So last week was an experiment, just like they said. There's a lot of things that I liked about last week. I'm on record as saying that on last week's Afterthoughts episode. And there were just some things that needed to be fine-tuned. And a lot of the things that needed to be fine-tuned were taken care of. The lighting was obviously better because they did it on the Movie Talk set. And it, it still felt familiar to what Mark was doing because he had it set up. You honestly had it was shot in the way that they would film a news segment where you have the two green curtains on uh, the right and the left side of two people sitting in, in a chair. They would cut to, uh, you know, they would cut to an individual's camera or whatever just to show them when they talk. But uh, at one point or another, they would have a rotating person. Somebody would come in and talk. I believe on this episode it was. Roca and Perry was there somebody else I think it was just Roca and Perry but my apologies if I'm forgetting someone but um towards the end they did take the phone calls I thought it was first of all new equipment alert no headphones now we have earpieces which I am fascinated by like earpieces you would see on ESPN or something like that Sweet. which I think is really cool but um there was a few technical issues. They they weren't getting the audio through to the listeners or to the people in the studio on the very first phone call, um, but they ended up figuring it out. The thing, my only, uh, I guess, not issue, my only criticism here is that even though they, even though it still had a lot of the beats from the experiment episode. It felt like an episode of Movie Talk. There was a lot of talking to the camera. That attitude that you get on Movie Talk was there again. Yeah. And we didn't get the more laid back, sort of personal, almost sports radio vibe that we got from 
being in the podcast studio. And it's fascinating how just a change of scenery, because there's no reason you can't have that same tone of voice when you're filming an episode of Movie Talk. It's just how aware are you of the cameras? Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing to sort of explore because I like that. I, me personally. Um, and I think from last week's discussion, the thing I'm sort of reconciling is yes, there are technical things to get worked out and to get ironed out. But I, I'm glad to see that the idea of it wasn't abandoned because listen, even if people are not liking it, if they're not enjoying it, maybe they thumbs down a video, maybe they leave a shitty comment, whatever the case may be. I'm just going to say it. The fans don't always have the best ideas. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it's overwhelmingly one side or the other, or if that's their opinion. Sometimes you can't always listen to the fans. And if we need to go in a different direction, and if we need to have a, n- a new vibe that you truly believe in and you truly feel, you execute and you push forward with it. And that's exactly what I think Mark is doing. Um, me personally, I do want them to come back to that sports radio sort of vibe, uh, but we'll see what happens the longer this goes on. So you do feel better about it. Like, could you tell that Ellis felt at least better about it? Because he was pretty transparent last week. Did you, did you? Could you read into anything? Yeah. Did he crack any jokes or... Yeah, I mean, there were a few jokes here and there when they did, they, you know, they had a couple hiccups and they, he was still in, interested in our takes uh, about how the episode went down. One thing that I will say about it and that I will notice, like, silence on movie talk is deafening. Like, yeah. it, it is so much more apparent than it's ever been on anything else I've watched in that studio. Right. Like, um, not th- there's a lot of ambient noise going on during a schmo down, but and maybe even during a schmo's no live show. I think it- it's just kind of weird when they're saying, "Hey, is anybody there?" And they just sit there in silence for a second. Like it's it's very unsettling. I don't know what you do to mitigate that. I think for the live show, maybe Cobster like will say something in that space, but it's just <laughs> it's it's very striking whenever there's just a moment of silence in uh in the studios yeah it's just based on you know the, how the show is built and the energy that ellis starts off with right. like he is he's so hosty that that's what the show becomes right out the gate so you're absolutely right whereas you know w- with what we do silence is is golden no false so I, I'm glad that they're figuring it out. I listened to the Wanger show, by the way, because part of me was like, if you have Copster there, if you have Cody there, why can't they figure out how to do phone calls? Because the Wangers have been doing it. I listened to last week's episode of the Wangers, or this week's rather, and uh, they have now resorted to uh, to videos submitted via Patreon, I think. And I guess part of that has to do with with Patreon, or maybe it's because Beardo was out. But either way, I noticed that they hadn't taken calls. So someone who listens to the Wangers regularly might be able to inform inform me of that. Um, but uh, but yeah, Frank was on the Wangers this this past week, so that's cool. I actually like the idea. I have liked the idea for a while of um, of doing questions like that because you and I we we don't do any of our shows live and. I don't know. The more I think about it, I think doing a live show, there's just, uh, I don't know. I don't, I just don't think it's necessary <laughs> with, with the exception of, of calls and this and that. But I like the idea of a fan submitted question via like an Instagram DM or whatever the case may be. You can sort of vet the questions and, and, um, find the best ones and circumvent some of those technical difficulties ahead of time. I like that. I like that approach. Yeah. Well, another show that's recorded live that doesn't need to be is Movie Review Talk. So I was really, really excited by the panel behind the first episode of Movie Review Talk. And then I saw the lineup for the second episode. And I'm I'm familiar with Kevin McCarthy. I wasn't familiar with uh, the other lady that was on the show at the time. And I'm I'm forgetting her name. I'm blanking. I don't have it in front of me. Sorry. But I wasn't familiar with her. I was familiar with Kevin, and I was excited by that choice. And two consecutive weeks in a row, Movie Review Talk uh, has had some of the most exciting panels that we've had in a while on on Collider. I just loved loved how they were matching Scott Mance the entire episode. And 
I just I felt not that I needed to, but I just felt better and I guess it was it was just reaffirming that this show already feels like it's on solid ground as long as people are watching it because this is a, a, a very welcomed show uh by us here. We're very happy to see it do well. Uh this past week it got 8,000 more views than its previous week. Uh I think the first week it was like 48k, this week it was 56k. So uh, it's doing better than, yeah, it's a new show, but it's doing better than some of the movie talk episodes that, that we get. So, uh, like I said, I think this is sort of, uh, sort of, uh, reinvigoration on the channel. It's something new, but it also kind of falls in line closely with what, th- with the precedents that they've already set on the channel, this sort of long form routine talk show. And, uh, I, again, I just thought the, the second episode was, uh, really fun to watch and, uh, great panels always. And, uh, again, I cannot wait to watch it tomorrow at the time. Well, this, this Friday, the day that this show is coming. Yeah. I'm a big fan of this. I think, um, I think movie review talk has just such a different identity to it from anything else that we see that it's, it's very refreshing and it's, it's fascinating how they're deciding to do a lot of these new things at the same time, because I think it, if you were to just drop one of these types of shows, one of these new tone type of shows, that it doesn't really do much. It's just something that feels a little bit different. But if you're dropping all of these things at once in clusters like they've done over the past couple of weeks, I think it sort of it doesn't necessarily shift anything, but I think it makes the audience more receptive of these changes. Um, and I, I think that's very important. I don't know if that's conscious. I don't know if that's a conscious decision, a conscious effort, but if it is, it needs to be done now. I think with all these new things going on and so much still staying the same, it's just very beneficial to be introducing new ideas, new voices, and all this stuff uh, into Collider. So hats off to them for that. Did you catch uh, last week's Jedi Council that Ken hosted while Christian was out? I actually didn't get a chance to watch it. I know that you sort of sang the praises of it. Um, great to see the fact that Ken was getting to host the show. Um, because we know what he can bring to the table in that regard. But uh, tell me about it. Would, would you uh, would you enjoy so much about it? So I am a frequent uh, Force Center listener, the Star Wars podcast that uh, Ken and Jennifer and Joseph host. Same. Uh, I listen to that uh, a couple of times a week, and it's fantastic. So we, we all already know what Ken is capable of. I don't know if we ever got confirmation as to why Christian missed that episode. Did, did we ever know that? Was it just a screening or something else? I feel like I haven't seen Christian in in a month. So. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's uh, weird. We got anyway. him on Harloff and Ellis, and that was about it. Yeah. Well, the thing that I noticed about this this episode, and it's it, it, I guess it made me realize a particular way that Jedi Council is different than Heroes, and one of the best things about Heroes is that Schnepp because he's so absurd, it's Schnepp is a gangster, he's off the wall, he cuts up, he doesn't give a shit about format, he ignores all the transitional graphics. Because Schnepp is just the way he is with his show, the energy and the fun that he has with the panelists, it it's a totally different vibe than Jedi Council. And it's just more obvious and apparent that Schnepp's guests are having a lot of fun with Schnepp, whereas I don't know if it's always obvious and apparent that that's how Christian is hosting the show. It's just it's just a very different tone, I think, overall. Christian cuts up, sure, he'll make a fart noise, but I just thought it was sort of louder. Again, more obvious is the point that I'm making. So when Ken came in to host Jedi Council... Ken hosted it in a way that felt more like Schnepp hosting Heroes. It felt like there was just different energy, and everybody was just kind of louder and more excited. It Ultimately, it did kind of just feel like an episode of Force Center, but in the most obvious ways, because Ken is hosting this Star Wars show, right? But uh, it was just interesting, and uh, I mean, I think Ken should always host when, when Christian is not around. I thought it was fun. So I, I would still check it out, unless... Well, maybe not. I know you're not going to watch it, so whatever. <laughs> well, I think it's, uh, I mean, I think it just goes back to a point that we've made before, just that I think Heroes has has always had this tone about it where it's a bunch of fans sitting around and talking the way fans would talk, just like gushing or sweating over uh, just this stuff. And 
whereas not that not the Jedi Council doesn't have that vibe to it. It definitely does. But the thing that I, that I appreciate about Jedi Council is how multifaceted it is because it, it it's sort of more of like a a reporting show, and it's like there's a lot to be done with casual fans on that show, but they can also deep dive in things, right? Like it's it is much more structured. Um, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that there are these different vibes and that there's these different, um, sort of, you know, tones that these shows can have. There's really no right or wrong way. I I don't think to do it. And it's probably just based on pure preference. But, um, I I think that means more to me than anything that whoever is hosting the show, whoever, whoever is structuring the show does it the way that they want to do it and the way that they believe that they should do it as opposed to just like constantly shifting towards, well, this podcast or this channel over here is doing this this way. So maybe we should start doing it this way. It's, it's important. I think for any show to have its own identity. Right. And that speaks volumes. Like that's the exact reason why I listen to force center and Jedi council, even though they're both about star Wars, even though they both cover the exact same news every week i listen to both of them because they are different because they do have different voices on them aside from ken but they they sound different and i get different takes and yeah that's that so and and that's where that's where niche communities become so important i think because so there's a big difference in me saying that there's a lot of movie podcasts out there just general movie podcasts out there and I don't have a lot of room for any more in my life. I think that the sort of the drawer is full. But and I know that there's a lot of comic book podcasts and there's a lot of Star Wars podcasts out there. But me personally, I'm not no one's battling. Not as many people are battling for my attention in that regard. So it's easy for me to just default to what Collider provides there um, or just what Ken provides because he's involved in this space as well. But this the idea this was brought up on another podcast but th- this idea of like competition in podcasts or more people are over here as opposed to over here that just doesn't exist it it doesn't exist it will never ever exist you have the ability to pause one thing and go watch another this isn't cable tv this isn't network tv where two things are going on at the same time and if you don't watch one you might not get to watch it it just doesn't exist. What what does exist where the concept of comp- competition comes into play is a competition for your attention. If you no longer have the attention to take in multiple avenues of content, then yes, that's an issue. And that's an issue that you have to deal with and that these people need to figure out how to construct their shows to be different than what else is going on in the world. But A competition between podcasts, a competition between YouTube channels and YouTube videos in new media simply does not exist. I get a lot of follows from movie podcasts, and every time I get one, I consider quitting. (laughs) There are so many, there are too many, and I hate the idea that I am contributing to that as well. But you're right, people, nowadays you just pick and choose, and they come and they go, and... uh, I agree. Uh, I, I mean, I would love to know what what people at Collider would think about that statement. Like uh, people that actually work in that industry. Well, well, we have to get this interview, or we have to break this. Do you do you really have to do it? If uh, if if somebody gets Haley Joel Osment on their podcast before you do, can't you just ask Haley Joel Osment to come onto your podcast? You could say yes, or you can say no, or you could ask anybody else in the world. It's uh, yeah, I, I I think I think if people focus too much on stuff like that, they're probably focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. Um. So anyway, the- come at me, bro. Sorry. So going back to to heroes, we uh we found out that Snap was only going to stick to the the Monday show. Uh, last week they did an all Twitter Q and A uh, for an episode on Wednesday. So we thought, okay, maybe heroes is going to be. Uh, both episodes of Heroes are going to be recorded in one day. However, looking at this week's episode of Wednesday's Heroes, it looks like it was filmed on a different day because they're all wearing different clothes. I pay close attention. I At first, 
I, I, I was wondering, like, because Koi, I think Koi was on Wednesdays and Marquia was on Mondays, and I thought, well, I guess they could have just both come in and filmed their own episodes this week, but uh, Robert Meyer, Burnett, and Schnepp are wearing different things. So, for right now, or at least for this week, it felt like Schnepp did uh, a Wednesday show, because it wasn't all Q&A, it was, uh, it was timely, and it was news. So, I guess I still maybe just don't understand why he said goodbye if it kind of was if it was just going to be seamless anyway because it doesn't feel any different other than he's missing out on one or two episodes of movie talk which there's only three movie talks a week anyway now yeah i unfortunately i I just i don't get to take in as much heroes as probably i'd like to or probably as much as well for sure as much as you do i don't know i i never really read the i know there are a few different ways to interpret that message but I guess I just more saw it as just a goodbye for movie talk. But uh, unfortunately, I can't provide any additional insight to that. Yeah, I was just I was curious to see where where his time would be sp- spent because I thought it was going to be more about the Schnepp zone. Maybe he's getting some stuff ready. I know that he's been away at a couple of conventions, so he has been busy in that sense. But I mean, if he's not going to be a collider, I want to make sure that I'm paying attention to everything else that he's doing because I love Schnepp. Um, so. I just found that curious. Maybe maybe he's still getting some things together. Uh, the last thing I really have on the main channel is that Perry had content centered around her set visit for Ant-Man and the Wasp. And so she put out three videos. I think this is the stuff that she was working on when she took a sick day, which is uh, speaks to her character. Those videos, though, did not do well at all on the channel did you notice that they all have about between like five and eight thousand hits yeah i i actually didn't notice that i watched both of them i thought they were both done really really well um i i, I was confused about their timing like when does ant-man come out uh it's next week right it's the first it's the 29th i think yes so i think i think all of it could have been centered around uh, maybe a bigger push a little bit closer to the movie. I mean, I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm sort of checking my own temperature as well as just elsewhere. I This isn't Infinity War, right? This isn't even Black Panther. Like, I, I like the Ant-Man film. I like the first one. I just rewatched it recently. I really, really enjoy it, but I'm not going to lie that the heat meter, it's not scorching hot for this movie. So it's uh, it's a little strange that it came out as early as it did. And there was really no other content there to support it. Like, I'm sure Heroes is going to deep dive on Ant-Man next week, and they're going to be talking about a lot on Movie Talk to sort of get people hyped up and excited for it. But it just to me, it seemed like unwarranted content that might not have been geared specifically uh, to the right audience at the right time with everything else around it moving like some sort of choo-choo train. Um, I misspoke. It comes out in two weeks. So it comes out July 6th or whatever. Yeah, so even was. but even more. Why, why put it out well, now? Well, I mean, this is – I mean, this sort of just parallels set visit exclusive articles. And, and to my knowledge, I don't know if Collider – I think Perry said that she wrote it up, too, for Collider.com, and that's something I've missed because it was a few days ago, and I'm not going to look back on it. But, but I mean, set visit exclusives and fun facts, all that stuff, that's nothing new. So, And I, I understand the, the, the reason uh, for this. Again, going back to the content that we would like to see supplementing these, these articles, right? So it makes absolute sense in in that way. And I I guess I do wish I had the article up because I'd be curious to see if those videos are actually uh, coupled in in the article. But, uh, but anyway, it should be, I just, I, I just assume that those would do way better. And I I just don't have an explanation for it. Um, because yeah, I know we're two weeks out, but it's still an MCU movie. And I get Mm -hmm. that you're not as high on this as Deadpool two and black Panther and infinity war, but it's still me. You just said that. Oh, I'm higher. I'm higher than Deadpool. You were talking sure. about the heat meter. I'm talking right. Oh, and I'm talking right. You, you mean heat meter in general? Yeah. My heat, my heat meter is higher on this than Deadpool, but the general heat meter, yeah, it's lukewarm at best. Right. So, I give it a little bit more credit than that. I mean, I think Eight Man and the Wasp is the next big thing that everybody's. Well, that's not true, Jurassic World, but it's going to be a contender. Is all I'm saying. Like. 
when it comes to what Collider Video is all about and the audience that it has, this should have done better. I mean, this should these should have done at least 20K. So I really don't know. I don't know what you can pin on it. Can you pin yeah, the, the discussion I, I on promotion? Like, I, I just no. don't know where – I don't know what this Come is. Come on. Come on, it's. I think it's pretty. It's clear as day. I mean, the thing that drives a lot of videos like this, it, it's speculation and it's wanting to know more. And you've said it yourself before, like with these cast interviews, like you, you hope you don't want anything spoiled, but you hope to get a little bit of a nugget of information to just get you even more excited. And there's not a lot surrounding this movie to really take it to that level. The only thing it really has, the things that it has going for it is one, uh, it's the first movie, first MCU movie after infinity war. But because of what people know about the movie, it takes place before infinity war. I'm, I'm aware that there might be more into it than that. We're not, we're not here to talk about the movie, but also just the fact that, I mean, the, the time between this and and when it comes out between right now and when it comes out none of that stuff is working together for it to to really get people to really pay attention to it right this second same thing with with solo right like there was more going you could argue there's more going for solo because of all the drama behind the scenes right we haven't heard a lot of drama behind, about this movie it's just it's just a movie that's going to exist. It seems. Yeah, w- I mean, would these videos make a lot more sense if they came out the week that like their scoreboard came out? Their all of that yes. stuff. Yes, but Without a doubt. again, like I I just think because of what because of the movie because of the audience because of the channel, I still expect like twenty <laughs> k on those videos. They should take them down and reupload and them. Reupload them. Yes, without a doubt, reupload them. The week of the movie, if you're going to do your scoreboard, if, you know, uh, all that stuff is going on. Because there's a – you're you're right 100% in looking at this if it was any other MCU movie for the most part, especially in this climate that, that we're in. But this movie is sort of an anomaly in the sense that not it's not the household name, not as many people – I think are attached to it. And again, because of the fact that it's, it's not directly tied to this huge event that we just had. I mean, it is, but it's not, you know what I mean? That I just don't think it's, it has the extra oomph that it, it probably needs. Well, is that, is that all we have here? (laughs) You said it like, uh, you said it like, you were disappointed. All right, how do you feel about the episode? Uh, it was okay. It might it might actually be my least favorite episode of Afterthoughts. Well, I don't know what you want me to say. You don't have to say anything. You, I just answered your question. Actually, the last thing I want to end on. We got a. We've been hearing about the, the this whole Frank thing, right? So Frank was on the Wangers. And people were tweeting at me. Collider Video tweeted at I don't know who was behind that. I don't know if it was Christian. I don't know if it was Dorian. I don't know who that was. But people have been uh, messing around with us. They've been pressuring us to have Frank on the show. And it's not that I don't want to have him on the show. I've been talking to him the past few weeks. Delightful man. But my issue is that it's always been about get Frank on Afterthoughts. Where the hell are my invites to these other podcasts. What is that about? No one gives a shit about you. Well, I, I know, but like I had Ken on on uh, Sight and Sound and it was a good show. Everybody liked it. I I've had all I've had so many of these pundits on things that I've done. I haven't had one invite to any any other collider show. The one time I was on the Schmoes No Live show, I I was pretty much banned from ever calling into the show ever again well that's why it's totally different i like how you're framing it i haven't got my invite where's my invite well i mean it's like code Cody where's was- our invite why haven't we gotten invited because you don't care i'm the one that cares clearly and i'm the one that's paranoid that's the problem that you i care be cool i am cool just be cool it took me two years to make this point that's pretty cool yeah, but you can't. You, there's no competition in new media. 
It's not about competition. I, I'm on the same plane as everybody else. Just relax. I don't get the invite. All I'm saying, I'll, 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 I will all RSVP. I can't say that, apparently. If you stop caring, you'll never be disappointed. I don't know if I can do that. Then that's your problem. Such it's your problem. Appa- what? It's such an obvious apparent thing that I've never been in. Anyway, so I think that about does it for uh, this week's episode of Collider Afterthoughts. Guys, Jay and I, Jay and I, we together host and produce content for Sight and Sound. There are links, actual links, not just a block of text that's indiscernible. There are links to everything Sight and Sound in the description below. iTunes, Spotify, our YouTube channel. You can check out all of the videos and podcasts that we do on a, on a weekly basis. So if you want to support Jay and I, that's the best way to do it. Come hang out with us. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at WhatUpSnell. I'm going to go play Assassin's Creed Origins. Jay Williams, where are you at? <sighs> Ryan, do, do you do you know what time it is? you know what time of the year it is right now? It's I'm do looking you, out my window you know? at rain. <sighs> do you do you know? It's scorpion season. It's time. It is time. Drake is releasing an album. And if you are not excited about it, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you because it is time. Sight and Sound has got you covered. I have a half day tomorrow on Friday when you're hopefully listening to this. If it's Saturday, it was yesterday. I am doing so much content around Drake. I've got like 13 videos to talk about the Six God because he is dropping his album Scorpion. If you don't know, Drake is my Star Wars. And yes, that is right. Drake has surpassed Star Wars. Not my Star Wars. This is my Drake. And we're talking about him all next week because he's got a new album coming out. He's apparently got an illegitimate child. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the Six God. You can find that on Sight and Sound's YouTube channel, also our podcast feed, wherever podcasts are found. We have a Donald Glover shirt, and that doesn't have anything to do with Drake, but you can buy that too, sightsoundpod.com. 20 bucks. Christian had no idea that was coming out. Well, now he does, unless he just didn't, did it in the show. <laughs> but that's fine. Um, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram, at Williams, J to the A to the Y to the E. Uh, it's the same for both. I will give you my LaCroix recommendations, of course. All you got to do is ask Perry Nemiroff. All you got to do is ask where to find them in your grocery store. Uh, LaCroix is not a soda. It's a water with bubbles in it. So you find it in the water aisle. You got anything? Okay. No, that's it. Okay.